Right, so we're going to start stripping the carbs. Let's see how clean they are. I like to start with the tops, just in case that if you've got trouble with the bottoms, you can hit them and uh, you won't crack because these are plastic. So, we're going to try the impact screwdriver today. That was a good fit. I need to clean a little dirt in there. That's the bracket for the choke. For the spring. Try not to lose that. Try to remember where it goes. Otherwise the choke won't work. Yeah, it's got a bit of grit and dirt inside it. Nothing about a brake line I want to solve. So, um, I'll see you. I'll see you there. I'll see you And that's all the bowls off. As you can see, most of them are clean inside, except this one. There's grit in the bottom, yeah, a bit of dirt. This is number four, which is the side that uh, always has 
dirtying it because it's on the side stand. No, no that's wrong. It's usually number one that's got the dirt in it. Hmm. Oh, that's strange. It is usually number one that's got the dirt in it because it's on the side stand and it leads to that side, not the other side. Yeah. So. Why it's got dirt in number four, not number one, I don't know. But it has, and I think that's what's been causing the problem. Give it a spray. This will get the water out of it. If you're going to spray into a bowl or anything that's a blank end, make sure that you wear glasses or that you don't spray it towards you because that stuff will sting and can blind you. So yeah be very careful right we've got all the bowls off now we're going to go through each carburetor cleaning the jets making sure they're not obstructed we'll start with number one The tube is moving, it comes loose. It does that sometimes. Should have a spanner handy. And yeah, screw it. Take out the tube. The bike was running at higher revs, over 4,000. So I'm not expecting to find anything in here. And now, lovely and clear. <laughs> Check inside. Yeah, nice and clean. We'll give it a little spray anyway, just in case. A little bit. Right, you put the sleeve back in, or motion tube as they call it, nip it up gently, be careful with these, they have a little copper ring on them. I think this is a set for better.
Check the main jet. Nice big hole in that one. Give it a squirt. Clean out any bit of dirt. These are the idle jets. They're very small, so they're the ones that get blocked up. Yeah, there's no hole in that one. Again. Still can't see a hole through it, so we got the wire brush, old traditional remedy. Put that through the hole. Now we have a hole. I like to spray into all the holes and clean out as much of the rubbish as you can because it doesn't take much to block an airway or a fuel way and cause problems. Give it another spray. Make sure all the bowls are nice and clean. Again, if you're going to spray anything into it, make sure it's facing away from your face. You don't want any of this stuff in the chops. It's nasty.
I also like to replace the normal bowl screws with Allen keys. They're much better, they last longer, and as you can see, they have a bigger head. A little dab of anti seize. Yeah, a little bit of scotch bright. It's really got an aluminium. Just to get the little bits of corrosion off to make sure you've got a nice flat surface to put the put the base back on or the bowl back on. Put the bowl back on. Put the bowl in. I use stainless Allen key bolts. Sips held stop corrosion and a little bit of anti-seize just in case you need to do it again take them back out the weather in Wales where we live uh, in the winter gets really bad and the council use a lot of salt so a lot, a lot of stuff gets corroded so anything you can do to help stop the corrosion is always a plus and as you can see they look nice with the shiny stainless allen key bolts I think they look nice on me nicer than the original little screws Reconnect the takeover screw again, replacing the screw with an iron key bolt because I think they look pretty and they're more practical and stainless steel.
Right, so that's the bowls cleaned, the jets cleaned, reassembled. I just have to put the slides in, give them a little bit of a clean. Put these pipes back through here. That's the way they were. back on all reassembled now we can do the tops right to do a static check always start with the main carburetor which people think is the first one but it's not the main carburetor is the one that the throttle cables connect to and also has the tickover cable connected to so this is your main carburetor. Some of them on the end, some of them in the middle, some the other end. All depending on what bike it is. So we use, I use a small feeler gauge because I happen to have small feeler gauges. But you can use anything that will give you a reading. A large feeler gauge, normal size, whichever is easier for you, whichever you have to hand. So but you need something that will give you, you need something that will be the same, the same piece all the way through. So we start with number one, it won't go in, so open it, big enough for the field gauges to go in. So that feel good. So that feel gauge will go through there. So we're slacking it off. So it's a tight fit. And then we try the others. And they're almost exactly the same. that's a good sign once you've done a static test when you go to do a balancer with balance gauges you won't be far out it might even be perfect so if you've got the carbs off it's well worth doing a static test first if the carbs are not the same then it's also easier to adjust when the carbs are off you have you balance screws here and you always again start at the beginning you balance number one with number two and then you balance number three that screw is 
a little bit awkward to get to there and then the same with this one here at the edges and so once you've done that you can so once you've done that you can reassemble it and do a gauge test on the bike but I say once you've done a static test you won't be far out some rubber residue in the grooves you want to get that out otherwise the rubber diaphragms won't sit properly Again, a little bit of scotch put on the edges always helps to clean off a little bit of corrosion. Check the needles for wears, steps, corrosion, anything like that. The sliders. Sometimes you get dirt on the actual diaphragm itself. Again, the more you clean, the more chance you have that things are going to go back together better and run tidy. And try and get as much dirt as you can out of everything. Obviously, you're being careful, you don't want to damage anything, which you can do when you clean it.
I would replace all these bolts with Allen key ones if I could, but to replace them all, they need sleeves, which are uh, awkward. And if you cut them the wrong length, you could crack the caps, which then becomes expensive. So yeah, we're not gonna go down that road. We'll just change the ones that we can. Another thing you've got to remember is if you do a static test and you turn the tick over up, is to turn the tick over back down because when you put the bike, a uh, carbs on the bike and start it, it'll rev its nuts off. So wind it all the way down. So it's touching, you've got no gap. And that way, when you go to start it, 